Hey, it's John and Mike, brew-dudes.com, and this video is all about what you need to do to get your homegrown hops tested, because we're in the ages of getting things tested. And talking about that, you're probably gonna get infected by, you know, my bag of hops that I'm giving you. Uh, that's actually a sample of the Chinook hops that I grew in my backyard. We did a video on that. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I was walking down the street with a plastic bag of uh, green Greased. material. I'm pretty sure that... Uh, this is Massachusetts. A few people give... Yeah, That's Massachusetts. Okay. It's, uh, but, yeah, there are some... Eh, so, I, I got a couple of double takes. Anyway... Um, Am I supposed to do something with this? I, take... I don't know. Take it out a cone, sniff? like, okay. you know, rub it between... Do something cone. Yeah, sniff it up. All I don't right. know. Do whatever you need to. All Smoke right. it. It's, it's up to you. So, as a part of our, you know, doing it for the dash, I uh, looked up different places where I could get um, hops tested for, you know, a couple of things. Um, and I think I got a, I think I found one online, but then somebody actually suggested that the University of Vermont does a hop quality evaluation. And so I went to their site and looked for their form and actually contacted the people who are uh, a part of that department just to make sure they still yeah because the form that i saw was from like 2013 i was like okay yeah, yeah and it had a price that was attached like this price is valid through december of 2013 or 2014 anyway a long time ago and i just wanted to make sure that that hadn't changed because mm -hmm. clearly i hadn't seen anything updated so they said, yeah, we still do it, and the price is the same. And I said, so wheat. So the price was 30 bucks. So the first thing you need to know is that it's gonna cost you some money to get your homegrown hops evaluated. So the second thing you need to know is that you need to follow all the instructions that they lay out to get your uh, sample to them. And uh, the first thing is you have to have enough for, for at least for, for UVM, uh, it was uh, 100 grams. Of so dried a, hops. Of dried hops. 100 yes. grams. Yes. Wow. 100 grams. That's a lot. 3.5 ounces. Yeah. yeah. It kind of stinks because I'm like, I could be brewing with these, but I'm yeah. doing it for the dash. Um, so that's what we did. We, uh, we dried them out. I um, vacuum sealed it. They had a whole bunch of like different suggestions. Make sure that, you know, you're vacuum sealing them like they just want to make sure the quality doesn't you yeah, know degrade or degrade over, like yeah, shipping. In, in shipping right they even say like we highly suggest that you overnight at them to us i said no i'm doing it for the dash but not that hard so uh, two day priority it was fine sorry guys sorry guys so the third thing you gotta keep in mind is shipping costs um but like once you understand like what they need um, and like follow all the instructions to a T, like even like if you're gonna fill out, you have to fill out a form. I put Brew Dudes as our company name. Sweet. Because, you know, they're, they're evaluating for probably small hop farms and, yeah. and the like. Um, so I sent that along with my, uh, my check and the samples all in a big envelope and sent it out. And, and a week later, I got an email that had this PDF. Nice. So make sure you have a working email address <laughs> as a part of the process. It's true. Okay, so this is Chinook and this is from my backyard. The, uh, the things that they tested for were alpha acid, beta acid, and uh, hop storage index. Again, different, different testing sites will do more, do less. Yep. Yep. You know, I think that there was some cost, uh, like there were some other ones that like did a, a larger number of things that they evaluated, but it was like twice the price. I said, uh, forget that. Was one of those things total oil content or something like that? Uh, not that I recall, but okay. maybe. Um, but I, I, I felt like all I really wanted to know yeah, is like yeah, yeah. the alpha acid content of my Because that hops. is the question when people talk about homegrown hops. Yes. Is that the alpha is not going to be right. anywhere it's, it's near where it's supposed to be. It's not high enough. Yeah. You don't want to bitter with these. Yes. Is that, is, I have overheard that at yeah. my own local homebrew yeah. shop, no longer local, but I've heard that spoken to me when I said, you know, when I, I buy ingredients for a recipe and the person behind the counter says like, oh, what you brewing this weekend? And I tell them what I'm doing, like, well, you're not gonna use those as bittering hops, are you? I'm like, yeah, and I don't care. That was my answer. Yeah. Because I don't need someone giving me unsolicited advice at the homebrew store. Just saying. Man, I'm on fire. I'm on fire yeah, right now. You Thank are. you. you are. Okay, so here, 
So when you get the results, here's the sitch. My homegrown Chinook hops had an alpha acid of 11.2%. That's impossible. What they're mean? only supposed to be like 0.1% because they're homegrown. They're homegrown. The, the alpha is no good. Okay, so from, from the ranges I saw on um, the commercial, <laughs> shush, the commercial uh, ranges is like 12 to 14%. Oh, see, so yeah, you're underneath. So I'm a, a little under. Yeah, you're low. I'm a little under. Okay. You can you can say like my homegrown hops aren't up to snuff. But 11 percent. That's awful. 11 percent will round down is still pretty good. OK, beta acid is uh, 3.1. That's in the range that I saw online. Yep. It's because three to four percent. And then home storage index. Not that I really know too much about that and how that's really going to affect my brewing. I think there's some calculations where like how long this will last. Uh, yeah. Like it, it, things will degrade over time. Yep. But what I read was anything under 0.3% is good. I had a 0.24%. So maybe they're looking at um, like oxidized, some sort of oxidized alpha content or yeah. something like that, maybe. Yeah. But my take from that was like my sample was super fresh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was because yeah. I waited until it was all dried. The other good thing like about it is that a part of the instructions like for the the UVM test is like we can only evaluate dry hops and it was like moisture content of like eight to ten percent. So the other wonderful thing is my silly like I don't use yeah. like a, a food uh, dehydrator. dehydrator. You know, you I haven't just, built your own oast or something. No, I yeah. haven't built the oast yet. That's like a 2022 plan okay. for the backyard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I just like dry them on like screens in yeah. my basement when it's like super hot and dry. With, like down ambient there. airflow, whatever. Yeah. Is, yeah. And just let it let yeah. it go for like you know two or three days. Yeah. And you can see like from fresh to yeah. dry. Yeah. Those those hop cones open up and then they just become you know paper yeah. light and uh, dry and you, and like you just say like all right well I guess this is as dry as it's going to get before it starts rotten. <laughs> so that, I'm glad that that was also something yeah. that they didn't come back and say like, sorry, you didn't dry these well enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's yeah, great. That's my tutorial about like how to get your own test. You need money. You need to find it. Well, if you can find a place to, to get can... them tested Two, you got to have the funds to do it. And then three, just make sure that you follow all the instructions and and so on, and have uh, you know an email address here in the 21st century. Trying to get the camera to focus. So. If that's what the testing site says, they're, they're going to return your um, your results by. If they're going to just like email them in a PDF form, which I'm fine. Like I I funded the whole thing basically. Yeah. You know, I mean, you don't have to pay for postage. Just send me a a paper that says exactly what you're going to send in a PDF form via email. Oh, so, these are pretty good. I mean, there is a mild. Like citrus yeah. pine component there. Yes. They're good. Definitely and so, good. and so, and so, next week, stay tuned. We'll have that beer ready for you. Yeah. Because I did brew with them before I got the report. Yeah. Based on, you know, my own yeah. <laughs> history with this particular so plant. Let me ask you this. If you were, let's say, so I mean, I think that's cool. You brew a beer and with these and let's say you target like 50 ibus and let's see if it's a nice bitter 50 ibu pale ale or something right whatever you're going to do you can do what you want to do right but um i was just wondering like cost aside right it's cool to think now like next year different agricultural conditions in your backyard of course if you were to do this and they were like four percent alpha maybe you'd be like all right, I'm not going to waste my time brewing with these. Yes. And maybe I'll throw some in for aroma and see if that even works, yeah. right? But, you know, because we've had, I feel like over the years. Many years. Over many years, we've probably had more luck when you've used them for bittering than we have for aroma. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's exactly the opposite of what we hear most wisdom. of the time. Conventional yeah. wisdom. Oh, you just want to use them for aroma, right? And I, But not bittering because you're unsure. But I don't know. Maybe you should uh, to be me, sure. To me, aroma compounds, those aromatics and the specialty oils are probably more terroir specific and more successful agriculturally like dependent on how yeah. well you care for them, where the production of alpha is probably strain specific. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't this is just one time data point. So who knows? I'm with you. And the thing is like now with all the different, like tremendous hop varieties that you can get from, you know, commercially, 
that, uh, that people are used to from an aroma standpoint in this day and age. Yep. The hops that I can grow in my backyard are from, you know, are were like the hip ones in the 90s. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, they're really, yeah. it's like, and it's just here in the States, of course, but it's like the, the big seat, like the Cascades, Chinook, yep. you know, Columbus, yep. you know, um, I don't know, I had Nugget, I had Magnum, yeah. you, know, you know, Magnum. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think for me, growing homegrown hops, growing homegrown, <laughs> homegrowing hops to yeah. me, I'm not going to try to make a great New England IPA no. or, you know, because you just don't have access to those hops. No. But if you want to be able to have in your repertoire an American pale ale that is just a straightforward American pale ale, you can get a pretty close like Sierra Nevada, a, like a grapefruit pine thing with most varieties of homegrown hops you can get. Um, or otherwise, you can get, you can easily grow like things like Mount Hood, Willamette and, yep. and, and fake your way into a decent uh, British pale ale of true. some sort, right? True, true. So Absolutely. there's still value in having homegrown hops. Um, yes, there so. is. Just, you know, maybe not on the aroma side. You just have to be prepared for ups and downs. That's true. Yeah. That's true. All right. So hopefully, if you ever, you know, wanted to do that, if you grow your own hops and wanted to take it the extra mile to actually get them tested, you know, these are the things to keep in mind before you do so. Um, if you want to check out before next week when we actually taste the beer, check out our 2019 Chinook Harvest Ale that I brewed because that one came out. That came out great. Like good. that was the one that even I, as I posted it on the blog, I was like, sometimes brewing beer with homegrown hops actually turns out pretty good. <laughs> so uh, check that out. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. You can subscribe to our channel as well. For John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. We don't have beers, but brew on. Cheers.